So in this video, we'll see the use of uh, the initialized verb. Okay. Uh, I've just declared a working storage uh, element. It's a group item. I've have, I'm having uh, different kinds of uh, data types here. One is an alphanumeric data item. One is an alphabetic data item. One is a numeric data item. The other one is a filler. Okay. So this is the initial value for it, for the alphanumeric data item, which is of 10 bytes. That is testing one, two, three. For alphabetic, I've just initialized with A, B, C, D. That is also occupying 10 bytes. So the remaining bytes will be filled with spaces. This is numeric of 10 bytes. So one, two, three should be stored as uh, seven zeros followed by one, two, three, occupying a total of 10 bytes. Filler is filled with dollars for all the 10 bytes. Okay. So before using the initialize, initialize verb is used in the procedure division, especially for initializing a group record. You can move values to an elementary data item directly, but generally when you have a group data item which has a lot of elementary data items and you want to initialize all the values in a single go, then we can initialize the group data item. Initialize verb initializes this particular verb initializes alphanumeric and alphabetic data to spaces by default. Numeric data is initialized with zeros by default. Filler and occurs depending on. Now we have not yet come to occurs depending on, but fillers and occurs depending on is left untouched. So only these three data types are touched here. Filler is left untouched. So before any, uh, using the word keyword initialize, I have just displayed the values. Then I have initialized this group data item. So this, was, this will be initialized to spaces. This will also be initialized to spaces. This will be initialized to zeros. And this filler will remain untouched. So it will dollar will remain as it is. There is a variation for uh, initialize verb. If you want to override the default values for alphabetic, alphanumeric and numeric, uh, you can use it for uh, edited picture clauses also, but I've used the basic ones here. So initialize WS data, replacing alphanumeric data by alpha num. Now earlier it was initialized to spaces. Now if you want to initialize to some other value apart from spaces, then you can code that value in quotes because it's a uh, character data, alphanumeric data rather. So alphabetic data, I'm just replacing uh, with cares and numeric data, I'm replacing with 600. So after using initialize verb with replacing, again I am displaying the values. So to show you the you know uh, working storage variable, this is what I am trying to initialize. Initially, what was the values? After using the initialize verb, what will be the values? And after using initialize verb with replacing, what will be the values? We'll just save it. Let's go and compile it. then execute it. So before using the word initialize, before using the verb initialize, the what was the value stored in it? It was the initial value which was provided in the working storage section, testing 1, 2, 3, followed by A, B, C, D, followed by 6 blank spaces. Since it was initialized, 9 of 10 was initialized with 123, so it will pad the zeros in front of it. Filler had the values of dollars, so it is displaying as it is. Next, after initializing WS data, so the alphanumeric and alphabetic data is initialized to spaces, numeric data is initialized to zeros, filler is re remains untouched. Okay, it does not change. Then, after using initialize verb with replacing, followed by you know uh, alphanumeric data by something else and alphabetic data by whatever characters you want, followed by the numeric data. So this were, these are the new values, alpha num, 10 bytes, cares, 10 bytes, followed by 600. Filler again remains untouched. Okay. Hope you are clear with this. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. It motivates me to make more such videos. Thank you.